First Corinthians chapter four, part four. And Delaney and I, this is my daughter, I'm Sean. I don't get the Bible. We want to talk about <laughs> a concept. Go ahead, Delaney. Well, we ended the we watched the last episode because it was a good conversation. But the we ended with this idea of like kind of like synthesizing the way that idolatry, pride, and liberty are connected. Huge. And they all like we just were talking about this and wanted to start the episode with the fact that liberty and authenticity are huge um like characteristics of like a believer's life kind of or aspirations but liberty and authenticity in a worldly sense are extremely self-centered mm. like you know conservative i need my liberty like you can't tell me what to do mm -hmm. sort of thing or artists authenticity mm -hmm. it's funny it's kind of like a liberal mm -hmm. versus conservative i always think liberals and conservatives just divide mm -hmm. what christianity is about mm -hmm. in the, all the wrong ways but um yeah like liberal authenticity let me be me they're both like super self-centered or self-driven but liberty and authenticity in christ are the opposite they're about humility so if we took we could make a little statement here liberty and authenticity without god mm. is chaos and self-centeredness mm -hmm. liberty and authenticity through god is um humble is humble it, and and contributes to the world it, is yeah love. it does yeah. it contributes to the world versus liberty without god contributes to the self hmm. yeah and i i had a comment i came to the other day and it's uh your authentic self without god is probably an egotistical mother effer <laughs> think about it i'm just we being authentic sure yeah I'm leaving my wife and kids to go live my authentic life. Yeah. Oh, God, help me. Yeah. The, I really understand in a different way right now. He, he used to call his meetings campus, which is Christian anarchists meeting prayerfully. And it's like the same thing, like all of these worldly philosophies and stuff are very correct but they're just applied to the self we yeah. could take them and apply them to how you approach god so you're an anarchist a christian anarchist needing you do you don't listen to anyone except christ That's right, or baby. your christian liberty is which the accept christ addenda means you very much submit to one thing like you're humble you have liberty in christ meaning you're humble to Christ and yeah. you let him give you that freedom, not He's you take your freedom no. yeah, from the world. Or Never. Something. And it's been misunderstood since the day I've said it. Yeah, it really yeah. has. No one gets it. And, yeah. and then yeah. people try to make it, uh, you know, um, governmental or yeah. secular or yeah. anarchist. No, yeah. no, it's humble. Yeah. You could write a whole book on just that, that it, I get where people are coming from. You put Christian in front of it and it sounds like you're justifying the governmental position from your Christianity. Yeah. And it's not that. No. He's my archegos. He's my arche. He's my primary source. I don't give a rat's rear end about the opinions and, and behaviors of others, but I do try to love them yeah. because I follow that king. The world says, no, don't love this. Don't do that. Don't do this. I don't care about any of that. Yeah. 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 Uh, I don't know. It, it does lead to good stuff that I think both sides of anything are trying to go for. What? That sounds like a commercial we could do. It does. Christian lead. anarchy. It leads to good stuff. <laughs> <laughs> You get what I mean. Yeah. Like love. It leads to love, which is what all these people are aspiring for, but they're doing it through an aspiration for themselves first, which, which is, is not just love. the opposite. It's yeah. self-love. The systems work, though. They're authentic. 
for this liberals, world. for example, they they want authenticity for themselves. They they supposedly want authenticity for everybody. But the second they meet a authentic Nazi, that's not okay. Right, right. So like authenticity actually isn't the first thing that they are and their authenticity. There's yeah. a so there's just our holes. So the so that what uh, people say is the door of open love shuts hard when someone goes against your views of of something. Yeah, you know. And so we don't we don't do that. We don't care. We love people as they are and trust God will lift them. Yeah. That's in in love. There's liberty. That's probably the, in real love. Agape love. There's liberty. Yeah. But it's painful. Yeah. Yeah. Shall we? Yes, we shall. Speaking of Timothy, we get to that. Um, so. He continues, I'm not writing these things to shame you, but mm. to warn you, warn you. <laughs> <laughs> to warn you? She's, that, that subtle thought of him being a pedophile just slipped into her head. <laughs> Paul, I'm sorry. You can take it, though. This is verse 14, by the way. That was so I hate that so much. <laughs> I'm not writing these things to shame. It's because shame. You know, the Greek word for warm for there is moisten. <laughs> <laughs> to warm, moisten you as my beloved children. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> that is so horrible. Oh, my gosh. I think for that one, I'm going to be... A little bit further from God <laughs> after this life. <laughs> Jeez. Delaney, you're responsible for that. Oh, that was bad. That was so funny. <laughs> for, for, okay, I'm not writing these things to shame you, but to warn you as my beloved children. For even if you had 10,000 others... To teach you about Christ, you have only one spiritual father. And then I get so confused here. For I became your father. I became your father in Christ Jesus when I preached the good news to you. So I urge you to imitate me. Yeah. Paul really can write arrogantly. And it sounds really arrogant at places. That's why I know a lot of believers who don't like him at all. He just said earlier this chapter to not, he doesn't know yeah. his own intention, his yeah. judgment. And don't judge between me and Apollos. And now he's saying, yeah. I'm your spiritual father. But you got to remember, what does a Jew mean when he says that? And he know. means, I am, I am helping you children. They're, they're babes in the faith. They're still fighting with each other. So look to what I'm trying to tell you. It sounds arrogant to us. But in that day and age, I just, I, if he's arrogant, then I don't trust Paul. And yeah. I don't think he could be arrogant. So, or unless he's trying to fight against some evil. Yeah. So I don't know. But those kinds of lines make him very suspect to some people. That is sus. That's because you're thinking of it in the way we think of it. Yeah, I'm going through exactly what we just talked about, which is like my, there's a weird thing because you, you have said too, like, we're given reason we're given judge we're given discernment mm -hmm. so and like the only way to understand the whole thing contextually is through discernment mm -hmm. but just then you remember, have to just let it go paul had a job to do though that we don't have as an apostle it was to keep that bride believers holy pure without spot and undefiled for the coming of christ to take her so we have an attitude that comes out a little bit more dogmatically, more religiously, more cult-like from Paul. You can't escape it. But that's the, that's the place and time for that. When you think Christ hasn't come back and taken that bride, that's why we have a, a, a people like Calvinists and pastors and leaders who take on that same mm. attitude. I am your spiritual father. Follow me. I have been called by God to do it. And, that, and that's why we have so many cases of abuse and pedophilia and mm -hmm. all these different things when men assume the same role without any entitlement. They try to be what Paul is doing there and they have no right to do it. Make sense? 
yeah it's they should take it in context with the rest of what he said but also uh, yeah it makes sense sorry i'm just thinking. also remove it from spiritual religious things imagine that a war was coming yeah and he's the general he's not mincing words yeah yeah but he just said i know and it's Paul, like the opposite that's that's the very thing we were talking about two shows ago with with scripture yeah. you can't make it sit on all fours yeah. it will always contradict so our atheist friends who think scholarly views of it can make sense they don't get really what was going on yeah this is a proof in point i'm so glad we're doing this yeah and also there could be a way to see it as like he was telling them not to like not to be proud and not to like band together and divide over following Paul or Paulus or mm -hmm. something. But he's also humble. He's humble himself by saying, I don't even trust my own judgment. I'm doing all this work. He like listed all the stuff mm -hmm. and he's saying, imitate that, yeah. the humility that I've had in this time and like the work I'm putting in, imitate that rather than spending your energy dividing over each other right. i under I, that yeah. does make some sense and he'll have other epistles and maybe even in this epistle he's gonna write how dare you judge somebody else mm. the, who who what, who's their master it's mm -hmm. christ he doesn't say you know it's me so we have these conflicting points yeah. of view yeah, yeah. and he, this is literally this is following right when he says, sometimes I think God puts us apostles on display. Our dedication to Christ makes us look like fools. Mm. So follow that. Yeah. Like that's the sequence. Like follow the fact that I'm made to look like a fool. Yeah. Like, And that's how I'm your spiritual father. Yeah. yeah. Like I'm a fool. So now like, you're reading context. Yeah, that makes so sense. So it helps you understand that statement a little better. It really is a hard one though. It that's is. confusing. I love that this is happening with us uh, as we go because you're seeing how to take one passage to prove a point Gosh. is stupid. He, there, it's so stupid. It's <laughs> like taking a quote. Well, you can do this sometimes. There's the idea, like the way you do anything is the way you do everything. Mm. And if you take, it's like taking a quote from someone's life and saying, this is what that person was mm. by that quote. Sometimes you can kind of, it's almost like art. You can mm. see someone's whole life through a single thing they've said. Yeah, but good like, point. Another view. You don't know. I don't know. Yeah, I love that. Keep going. Okay, so he says, that's why I've sent Timothy, my beloved and faithful child in the Lord. <laughs> Boy, this is taking on a whole <laughs> new life. Watch our previous episode. Please strip that of your mind. <laughs> Give him the benefit of the doubt. <laughs> my beloved and faithful. He will remind you how I follow Christ Jesus. Oh. Just as I teach in all the churches wherever I go. Some of you have become arrogant thinking I will not visit again. So putting um, that in, in, in context too, yeah. if we take that, then he's saying, talk to Timothy. He'll yeah. testify that I follow Christ. If yeah. he had been <laughs> boinking the kid, I have a feeling that. <laughs> Maybe. I know. Now we come into, <laughs> oh God. It's pretty bad. But this is also not funny at all. No, not at all. It's not a laughing matter if he I'm was sorry. a pedophile. I'm sorry. It just, it's. I, I smile <laughs> because I find humor in very terrible things. And there's no humor in it. I'm trying not to smile. The humor is not in. I was molested, by the way. So. Yeah. It, yeah, it's yeah. not. It's like the humor is in how ridiculous it is that we're even talking right, about. Right. That's kinda. where the humor is. It's not in pedophilia. And I'm mad that I even have to explain that today. I know. Sorry. Go, go ahead. It's true, though. Kai, you people. You people. Um, so after Timothy. also sorry just one thought but I see so much of the douchiest stuff talk about judgment when men particularly make TikToks or whatever the heck saying follow me as I follow Christ uh, they do oh 
That's a thing. I've heard that since high school. People saying, follow me as I follow Christ. Oh, boy. And I think it comes from this because he's saying, like, we have Paul saying, imitate me. And then he's saying, he will remind you of how, Timothy will remind you how I follow Christ. Like, imitate me as I follow Christ. That's what we're pinning down as Paul trying to say is, like, imitate my humility. Mm -hmm. Like, don't follow me. Imitate Mm -hmm. the humility. But yeah, that's like a line. Follow me as I follow Christ. Well, I see as that could be taken as don't listen to anything I do unless it comports itself perfectly with who Christ was. That's a humble way to see it. But follow me. Follow me as I follow As I follow Christ is a way to say, follow me because I'm following Christ. And that is not what. It is not uncommon for people to say that. Follow no man. Paul will say that too. It's so sick. No man. I need to find examples of it. Okay, we we just have a few verses left of chapter four. Okay. So, um, I sorry at that last part he says some of you think, some of you have become arrogant thinking I will not visit again another time where pride or arrogance is used in a place that I wouldn't have expected. Mm. Thinking I will not visit like does is that supposed to suggest that him visiting means they're doing something bad. Yes. So he won't need to visit. That's why they're arrogant. Okay. But I will come and soon if the Lord lets me, then I'll find out whether these arrogant people just give pretentious speeches or whether they really have God's power. Um, And remember, remember that church was new. mm -hmm. It was gathered together of Jews and Gentiles, Greeks, pagans, women learning to speak for the first time. Mm. Very culturally in a church. <laughs> <laughs> Women cannot be before they do. <laughs> they were all mutes. <laughs> That's what it sounded like. <laughs> oh, and I didn't mean to make fun of mutes either. Dad! I'm so dead. I'm dead. It's fine. Uh, uh, we're... But the point is, is um, he was dealing with all this stuff. And there were Judaizers who were trying to bring the law into the faith, Gnostics to bring in this Gnostic thought into the faith, Romans. And so he, remember, is trying to usher this bride in in purity. So he is acting like a general. Mm -hmm. He's saying, I'm showing up. Don't think I'm not. And we have to take that into account. Mm. Okay. Okay. Um. Two, a couple things too. He's saying, I will come if the Lord lets me yep. just to indicate he doesn't even know where he's going. Mm-hmm. And it, you really g- do get a sense of Paul, like learning as he goes him saying him complaining. I do all this. Sometimes it feels like the Lord's doing like, he doesn't even, yeah. he's just learning, but, um, he also can't tell He's saying, I'll find out whether these arrogant people just give pretentious speeches or whether they really have God's power. Like he doesn't even Mm -hmm. know and time will tell. Mm -hmm. Like it just is, it's true for us at least. Mm -hmm. I I figured it was different for the Mm -hmm. apostles, but time is really necessary to like know someone's intentions. Yeah, in this world, so we wait. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Time is freaking everything. Yep. It's a big one for me right now. And the last verse is, for the kingdom of God is not just a lot of talk. It is living by God's power. Which do you choose? Should I come with a rod to punish you, or should I come with love and a gentle spirit? And at that day, and and I think that not only in that day was that necessary, but also in our day. Chuck Smith, who I learned from years ago, used to say, if someone comes to me and says, you know, I had an affair. I feel so terrible. I'm not worth anything. Or I've done this. I've done that. He says, I show him mercy. He says, when someone comes to me and said, yeah, I went out with my wife, but I'm saved by grace. And he says, I show him the rod. Mm. And, and I think there's wisdom in that when you're dealing with people. And mm. Paul shows that specifically there. Yeah, there's times when you just have to die to yourself. And, but there are times when, sh- when speaking harshly to someone to wake them up is important and it is a form of love but it's never described by paul as a form of love it's only seen in through him and peter and jesus and how they did things Mm. so just want to make that point 
Why does he ask them? Ask them what? He asks, which do you choose? Oh. I kind of just didn't get the whole phrase. I think he's trying to send them this letter before going there, and he's saying, you decide how you want to be treated oh, by I me. See. Yeah. For the kingdom of God, it's not just a lot of talk. It's living by God's power. So what are you going to do? Yeah. Should I, should, are you going to live by God's power? And I come with a loving and gentle yeah. spirit. Because okay. the church at Corinth was probably influenced by a lot of talkers. Mm. Either the Jews by the law or the Greeks who were rhetoricians. Yeah, that, yeah. well, that's, that's what he's saying. He just said, I'll find out whether these arrogant people yeah. giving speeches or he, he brought up like types of wisdom and maturity and eloquence and all that stuff earlier in the yep. book. So awesome. All right. That is the end of chapter four. We got through it. All right. Come back and we'll do chapter five. All right. Thank you all. See you later. Thank you.